go by the name of KPW, which stands for Knowledge, Power, Wisdom. Also, the initials for my government name, which we can get into off camera. Um, I represent Knowledge, Power, and Wisdom. I represent true, very hard-hitting hip-hop, influential music, and an underlying message. Lyrics, dope beats, and life. I grew up in Northern Virginia for the first half of my life, so um, I really became an adult here in Minnesota, so this is really the first time that I got to experience a hip-hop scene, obviously as an adult and just in general. I see a lot of camaraderie, I see a lot of dopeness in the circles that I run in, the circles that I see other people running in, and I see a lot of potential. Um, now, I won't front as if I don't see a lot of clickishness and to a degree some stagnation, but that can be worked on. Um, a lot of versatility in sounds, a lot of old souls, as I said before, off camera to you, um, and a lot of people who channel that 90s era flow in particular. That's what I gravitate towards just in terms of what I listen to and also the types of artists I like to support. There's influence there, both for me and obviously in them, and uh, I think that that's fascinating. Um, can you tell me more about where you came from? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'm actually first generation American. And um, I was born in the United States. I was born in Herndon, Virginia, which is Northern Virginia, about mm, probably 30 minutes from DC. And um, my parents are originally from Ghana and West Africa. So I've been there before. Um, I lived there for a good year when I was a teenager, but I was back and forth pretty much every year consecutively when I was a kid, between the ages of seven and 10, just kind of visiting and um, actually preparing to live there, which didn't work out. Hence, ending up back here. And then I moved to Minnesota when I was 15, and I got established here as an adult. So, this is where I currently reside. So, in my music, I talk about, talk a lot about adult experiences, life experiences, which are what I gained as an adult in my location, which is Minnesota. Um, you know, that's, that's something that's inevitable. As far as sound, I think what actually influenced me sound wise, at least in the long run, and ultimately was. Um, actually being from the East Coast and being heavily influenced by East Coast music or at least East Coast style music. So if you listen to the flow, the drum patterns, I make all my own beats by the way. So a lot of those are heavily influenced by New York style, kind of boom bap, you know, between 90, 95 BPM um, types of instrumentals. So um, overall, in a nutshell, that's kind of how the influence manifests itself. Ultimately, no, there's no representative sound of Minnesota because like I said before there's so much versatility in styles and in delivery and, and influence in artists I see here so I don't think that there's an overall representative sound and I don't think that that's even a bad thing because I think oftentimes when you you know especially today you have artists who are from places that kind of represent one style, for example, you hear somebody rapping over a trap beat that, you know, has kind of that more bouncy flow and is representative of, say, like a future or somebody like that, you automatically assume that they're from the South, at least that's the way it used to be. But now that's kind of an overarching thing because, number one, that's a more popular sound of today. And number two, it's 2019, influence is widespread. I mean, you have social media, you have the internet, you have a form of platform that people can kind of communicate and transcend location. So, um, long-winded answer, but in short, no, I don't think that there's a sound that's not a bad thing because access is ever-present. At this very moment, I'm working on a new, L a new LP. Um, our most recent LP is called Ativia's Beautiful Shells. Ativia is an acronym for art that is visual in audio. So I put that out at the beginning of January, actually January 1st of the last year, 2018. Um, and in between I've done two EPs, one called 875 Laconic and the other called 26 Antiba 3. Um, I can give you the spelling after this and maybe you can throw in the description or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but I'm constantly working on something. Um, and mainly I, I'll do the EPs just to kind of, you know, have material for people to listen to while I work on the bigger projects. So fast forward to now, I'm working on my, what would this be? Fifth LP, um, which is mainly rooted in 
um, kind of expression of my own personal experiences, personal growth, and kind of how I came to be as an individual today, um, at both as an artist and on a personal level with, you know, my relationship with the fiance, um, family influence growing up, that type of thing. So a wide range of topics to kind of get a little bit more personal um, as opposed to more perspective and, you know, social happenings, societal happenings like I've done in the past. Um, but doing that, I'm working on a new music video right now uh, for a song called Hatred off of my most recent EP and trying to light up my next show. All right, let's, uh, let's hope I don't forget anyone. Um, you mentioned dancers. Ben Lu, I believe, Young Pine Beats, uh, very cool individual, talented, very artistic. Um, I see Ashley Marie, I see Vinnie Crooks, I see Niles, I see Juice Lord, I see Destiny Roberts, I see Landscapes, who I have to shout out because first staring at the city interview she was on, she shouted me out. I was one of the first people, if not the first people, she shouted out, and I highly appreciated that. So I see Landscapes. Mad that I didn't get to go to that Ice House show, but it's all good. I'm sure she killed it. Um, I see my man King Kamal. That's the OG. King Kamal, very uh, very talented, very old school in terms of uh, delivery. Actually originally from um, the Chicago area, south side of Chicago, but he's uh, resided here for a while. But that's my guy. I frequently collaborate with him. Um, I see my guy Megatron, who I actually went to school with. Um, I see Mike Dazzle, who I believe just returned to the States not too long ago. T. Oh, um, God. rest in peace, son, she, you know. Um, and of course, Nipsey Hussle's passing influenced influenced and um, affected us all. So um, we to? see his spirit too. Who do I listen to? Outside of the city, yeah. Outside of the city. Um, I uh, recently collaborated with an individual from Philly named Eno Nazaro. That's actually One Horizon spelled backwards. So um, I've checked out his music. I like what I hear. Um, so, you know, when I collab with somebody or, you know, I'm a fan of what someone's doing, I don't just simply work with them. I do actually listen to their music and I'm able to appreciate it um, as far as outside of the city. Um, influence wise, also, you know, obviously who I listen to kind of lends itself to influence. Um, I was a student of a lot of very lyrical hip hop in terms of New York and location. So, Growing up, it was Nas, it was Rakim later on down the line, probably a little bit earlier into my 20s. Um, old Jay-Z, like Reasonable Doubt era Jay-Z. And actually, the way I started in terms of when I started writing rhymes, it was, you know, ironically enough, even though I'm saying that I'm heavily influenced by East Coast, I started writing when I was listening to more New, New, New Orleans artists. So I was listening to a lot of Cash Money particularly like Wayne and Juvenile and those guys um, because my cadences and my writing style kind of came from listening to the lyricism of the guys in the Hot Boys um, and the Cash Money, and, you know, in the Cash Money crew. But as time went on, I started getting way more heavily um, influenced by the East Coast continuous, continuous flows like the Nas of the world and whatnot. So, um, but nowadays, obviously all that is infused, but um, one of my favorites is Lupe Fiasco, just in terms of the themes, just in terms of the, um, you know, the creativity, the double and triple meanings and things like that, storylines, cohesiveness of the albums. Um, and outside of rap as a whole, Sade, I'm a huge Sade fan. Um, I like an artist named Seb Deliza, who is from Amsterdam, but of Iranian descent. I like Emily King. Um, a lot of soul um, influence as well and that's kind of where sampling and making beats um, became a thing that I was able to, to access so you know the Delphonics, the Stylistics, the Dramatics, um, several others, Phyllis Hyman, you know, people from that era. Hey bars, what we got here? All right. 
Tasteless ass palates crave, lust is an issue, trust is a misuse, accustomed thrusting the hit moves, rusting it fixed through, panic over reproductive chances, which wither with age and options that change, rage, through the iris of the males ignored in prior years like, you supposedly searched for perfect and I was here, settled down a term rather subtracts the vertical decline and equates to grabbing up the good enough, in prior years he wasn't square, prior years he wasn't hood enough, Mattis made a list of standards for the bougie broads who call themselves bitches running through the losers and crews of lost and Competent and inept men with no to offer. I rhyme the crews of loss with bougie broads and no to offer. The skills are byproduct of what's needed to kill your rosters. Ambition. Alright, you don't get any more than that. That's brand new. <laughs> the premise of the song that that 16, eventually what would have been a 16, comes from is um just really a recap of life as, you know, a young man in search of the right mate. And, you know, oftentimes what we see is as males, as we um, our perceived value tends to kind of go up in terms of um, stock going up. When we start to get established, we see um, obstacles in the form of not wanting to get established with the wrong person mm. for reasons of only being a good husband, but rather being a good match and finding a soulmate. Mm. And so I kind of am just recapping on having found the right partner and, uh, and having avoided all of that, which fortunately you know, it is my situation now. It's not always so, easy. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> not always easy, but yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Right. So, very fortunate. Minnesota seems like it's always kind of been on the verge, and it's been on the verge for a while. Um, I think that that exposure is on its way. I think that that exposure is very imminent for a lot of artists here. We've seen, um, you know, a good handful of people come out of Minnesota that have um, gained widespread coverage not you know in the big scheme of things not largely in terms of the game as they call it um, and I put it in air quotes for certain reasons but um, I think it's on the verge I mean especially with your you know your sound sets which are starting to garner more mainstream max in terms of you know your sway in the mornings you know pre sound set every year now for the past what what has it been three or four years now that they've been doing that uh, I think we're on the verge and I think that um, you know the development is there, for sure. Um, the reason I say the game is because you know that kind of that kind of lends itself to the whole idea of getting on, as people like to say. And I think that you know these days the land, the structure in the landscape is way different. I mean, I think that you can kind of create your own destiny now. There's really no there's really no necessity to wait to be put on. You see a lot of people who are independent now which is a great thing and we're kind of creating their own lanes and not really not really going off of reliance and I think that you know that's that puts you in a very advantageous position when you're an artist who can afford a, I mean, a studio session in your home by creating your own setup and not necessarily having a lot in terms of equipment or in terms of having the having to have spent an astronomical amount of money to have a decent setup to have decent sound quality and all that, um, but doing more with whatever you've got, you know. It's not the amount of your equipment, it's, it's not the monetary amount of your equipment, it's what you can do with it. So, the landscape has majorly changed and I think that artists have the heavy ability to put themselves on that. You know, I think that, I mean, just like any city, there has to be more of has to be less of a crabs in the barrel mentality. And I don't say that just to um, isolate or single out Minnesota. I think that that's everywhere. But I think that all in all, competitive nature is important. Hip hop is a competitive sport, but I think that that competition has to be healthy competition. I think that um, we really need to, you know, as artists, dope artists obviously, um, I think that the hesitation to support one another should really not be there. Um, if you genuinely don't like something, that's one thing. But I think that being afraid that somebody's gonna outshine you really isn't the look. You know, uh, I see that especially in hip hop. I see that you know there's a lot of hesitation with being being supported because everybody wants to be the man. Everybody wants to be the one. You know, we ain't gotta do that. And you know, in, in the words of Sun Chi, you know, it ain't, it ain't on no we are the world tip because, again, 
there's healthy competition and that's always going to be a factor and that's encouraged but um it really manifests itself in hate when you're not supporting somebody just because you don't want them to outshine you that's insecurity so um, other than that where to find me kpwhiphop.com that's a one-stop shop for everything um social media uh, photos, media, coverage, interviews, uh, show dates, schedules, merch, everything. Um, anything that anything else that I might have forgotten, downloadable albums. Uh, my albums are available for free in some shape in some way, shape or form somewhere. So if you just want to support, you can download for free, you can stream. Otherwise if you so wish, go ahead and buy it on iTunes, any album. Um, it's all there. KPWHipHop.com. What's going on, Minneapolis and the world? This is KPW, a.k.a. Knowledge, Power, Wisdom, a.k.a. Kojo. I'll stop there. You don't get the rest of the long name. You're watching Staring at the City. We're in Minneapolis. Not too far off of, well, I won't give the absolute location, the exact location, but Minneapolis, what up?